Okay, hello and welcome back to the Land Rover Toolbox videos and we're continuing with outright uh, paint and industrial coatings. What you'll remember is that we thinned down our Corollas uh, primer down with 20% uh, of uh, thinners. Now I've got to admit this is actually xylene that we mixed it with and not the Corollas thinner. So what we did, we went ahead and sprayed some components which are going to be on the underside of the vehicle. Now we're using this Corollas here, not just as a protection against rust, but also when we put the top coat on, it will be against abrasion from a road grit. So the top coat, or actually this won't be the top coat, but this is one of the coats we're gonna do, which is a glass reinforced, which should stop abrasion or cut it down at least. You'll know this better probably as a chassis in one or CIO from Buzzworld, which is actually a Corollas product. It's a little bit more expensive than what Arkwright can supply at, but it's your choice what you're gonna buy. So basically, either way, apply over suitable Corollas primer, and this is what we're gonna do. This is why we've used the Corollas S to work with this glass reinforced top coat. When we first sprayed the bumper, it came out and it was quite orange peely. But after a while, the Corollas S, or the, uh, the primer, this actually flattened itself out and it wasn't too bad at all. You can't see the orange peel in it, which is brilliant. However, if you remember, I missed a piece here. So what I'm having to do, I've left this to dry for a week and I'm just going to uh, flatten it down with 400 grit wet and dry. And I'll show you, Galv is terrible to be honest with you. It is, you can see all the high spots here have come through, um, through the primer, and there's nothing we can really do about this. However, this has been given a, a second and a third coat on the bumper, so it has corrosion protection when the zinc underneath it fails. What I have here is a nice little steel box which has survived since 1994 uh, being used on a road vehicle and uh, I've given this a damn good coating of Corollas basically because even with stainless steel fixings and you can see here these are uh, uh, last the time the steel cabinet has actually gone rusty here is the bottom side of it, which would have been low to the roadside. It's uh, still solid, and you can see that there's a white powder on there. Now, what I'm going to do first of all is clean this off a little bit, and I'm going to explain something to you what this white powder is and how it has actually helped slow down the corrosion on the steel box. So the manufacturer of this box would have put a uh, zinc phosphate primer underneath the paint as a primer. This would have been a good steel. Now you see where the rust is. It hasn't creeped underneath the paint. It's only where it's been damaged that it started rusting. Obviously in areas the rust has taken hold, but there is none of the flaking that you'd see on other paint products when the rust has taken hold underneath. So this is an exceptionally good primer. Zinc phosphate primers are used on steel where they don't have any corrosion. Now you can see this box has survived, luckily, and the patches of rust where they are, they haven't gone under the primer. Anyway, right, so I'm going to clean this up. I'm using 120 grit just to give it a really good key. I know for a fact that there is no rust under the paint, so I can leave some of the paint on there and then just cure the rest of the rust with the Corollas. So there's our rusty box there, and there's the lid for it with the handle taken off. You can see the aperture for the handle there. And there's our bumper. All of these have been um, keyed down, cleaned with a solvent to get rid of any grease or dust. Right, so I've shown you the data sheet. This was in the last video, and I just want to point out a stripe coating. It recommends stripe coating all edges, nuts, bolts and welds, etc. Which is basically what you do is paint the edges and the nuts and bolts, any weld, first before you go ahead and uh, paint the whole lot. So I'm stripe coating here. And it says with this glass reinforced top coat, again apply stripe coat to edges, bolts, etc. before full coat. Okay, so what we'll do, and this is on all pieces of work that says that we need to stripe coat it, then that is exactly what we're going to do. As you can see here, I'm just running up the edges and giving it a uh, lick of paint. And you'd do this whether it was a spraying or brush painting. 
so what I'll do with this one is stripe coat it and then go over to the box do that and then I'll do the bumper and then go back to doing a top coat so it's given a little bit of time so I don't get too much paint on and produce runs so once it's been stripe coated then um, top coat applied now remembering this is a very thick paint I'm pushing it out the gun at two bar presently it seems to be going on quite well but you'll see that it appears with orange peel so there's quite a bit of pressure behind it however like I said earlier this does actually settle quite well you'll note the spray technique I'm doing here is a 50% overlap which is painting and then covering it half as much again where I've just been so you can see the panels are done just like that and you'll see here in this example all right this is after I've uh, just put the gun away there's no runs whatsoever just to make it clear that the uh, these boxes all the items that I have here that have uh, got fairly heavy corrosion that they were coated twice flash time is about four hours between each coat okay so we got a cold day again and I have a water heater here put the paint into it basically this is roughly about 40 to 45 degrees centigrade and what I'm doing is making the paint a little bit thinner it's a good way on cold days to get your paint thin enough to be able to spray it Right, so the workpiece here is a little bit more secure than it was the last time I sprayed it, and I just broke a cardinal rule by touching the panels with my fingers. Right, so we have the box here, and what I have is a fantastic little table. I think this come from Kentucky Fried Chicken or summer. They were chucking it out, but basically it spins, so I can work around the workpiece by standing in one place. Always, as always, look after yourself and make sure you use a mask with fresh filters. This one has stopped paint particles going into my lungs. And I've now changed them. It's been over 24 hours, so these filters have to be chucked away. You can't really use them effectively after 24 hours. The charcoal in them um, just doesn't work. So we have a new set of filters in, and I'm getting myself ready to paint because the heated paint here okay that's uh, a good viscosity basically I'll just quickly wipe this so I'm not going to get any water molecules uh, into the paint while I'm uh, tipping it out into a pot so yeah look at the thickness of this it's absolutely not thick at all it is very runny now what I'm trying to do here is emulate a day that's about 35 degrees centigrade now you can see the viscosity of the paint is completely different this paint is very thick when it's cold in its natural state, but I have also thinned it. Just chucking it through the filter here, you can see it will actually get thicker very quickly because it is a cold day, so it's uh, gaining viscosity as it's cooling down. Again, I'm using um, a thinner base, which this one is xylene. It'd be best to use recommended Corolla's thinners, but this is 300 milliliters of paint, and I'm putting 30 milliliters of thinners in it. So I'm thinning it down by 10% in this case. Sometimes you have to play it by ear or by sight, but basically it is good enough for today, which is about 10 degrees centigrade outside. So as I explained before, striping is doing the edges and you can see that the paint's coming out of the gun actually quite well at the moment okay so good coverage on here and you see how I'm moving the table around to get to my workpiece and then there's the lid on here as well same thing again as striping off so basically what I'll do is go around and do all the edges first then I'll go back to my first workpiece and then work on that and do a uh, full coat on it You'll probably notice here that I'm actually rushing a bit and if you're a bit shrewd you'll see that I'm making some mistakes as well. However, I've gone round and striped the lot so now it's just putting a top coat on. What's recommended for this RF-16, which apparently will give you 15 years of a good working life, because this is using the oil industry, painting oil rigs, the uh, format is to use two coats of uh, Corollas S undercoat and then two coats of RF-16 glass reinforced top coat. This stuff will come out gloss. So basically, yeah, this is easy enough to paint. 
Obviously some of you will do it by brush, which is just as good. And this lays on very, very thickly. The spray gun is all right, it copes with the paint and it's now cooling down. Flash times on this are dependent on what sort of ambient temperature you have around you. Right, so the OEM, and uh, this is original equipment, is actually gloss on axles and uh, not matte like this. Uh, I don't know who has the idea of saying this is original equipment colours because it's not. Any new Land Rover will have gloss black axles compared with the uh, matte black which is the Buzzweld CIO. This looks like it's been under sealed for some reason. It's not OEM gloss black which is the top coat and this is from Arkwright Paints you can actually get it in any colour that you want so this is a good option. There is a link to the Arkwright site so you can then go on and look for the paint that you require however this glass reinforced top coat you have a drop down checkbox which gives you a few options and at the bottom choose your own choose your own you could type in what you like okay jcb yellow seems a very logical option i think this is probably a nice color to do your axles also on the website you'll see that there are four before land rover chassis kits and it's worth comparing the prices on these of course so I've done the other components and the steering damper and the steering bar should be pretty good for a few years to come. The day didn't go as I planned because what I found is that with this test the um, air cap gave me a non-oval spray pattern okay it was actually more predominantly paint down the bottom end you either get this with a blocked air cap or pointing the gun in the wrong direction. The air cap has two horns. Now, if one of the air um, holes here is partially blocked, you will get a misshaped um, spray pattern. So this is what happened. I had to clean the gun rather quickly and then carry on. But hey-ho, that's life.